this was revealed in the period of Makkah. It has 81 verses, 5 stanzas, and it is the 36th by the order of arrangement. The name of the surah comes from the starting alphabets just in the start of the surah, and the time period of the revolution is the last stages of the stay in Makkah. So if we learn when in the last stages of the stay in Mecca was the persecution and the tyranny and the oppression by the people of Mecca and by the people of Quraysh, it had reached its peak. And so in these verses, in the verses of these, uh, of uh, Surah Yasin, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has basically invited towards faith and has introduced and has given arguments for three basic things to to make the belief and faith strengthen and to help them be steadfast in their obedience to Allah in full patience. So the arguments which have been given for three reasons, the first is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about the faith and belief in oneness of Allah that is Tawheed. And arguments have been given from the science of universe and from common sense also. And then there is a debate about hereafter and arguments have been given for, uh, for life hereafter for the science of the universe and from common sense and from obviously from man's existence itself also. And then there are arguments for the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And uh, despite the fact that he was facing all sorts of hardships while preaching of his message, without any selfish motives and for whatever he was inviting the people to was rational and was reasonable and was just for the people accepting all that was for the interest of the people themselves. So this is the basic theme and Allah is talking about faith in the oneness of Allah, faith in hereafter and faith in the belief or faith in the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. These are what? These are basic three articles of faith without which the faith will not be completed or perfected. So now regarding the excellence of Surah Yasin, we learn uh, with a uh, tradition authority of uh, Hazrat Muakkil bin Yassar ta'ala and who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that Surah Yasin is what? Surah Yasin is Qalbul Qur'an is the heart of Qur'an. This is similar to one of the excellences explained for Surah Al-Fatiha where it was called as Ummul Qur'an the essence and the core of Qur'an. So here Surah Yasin is called as the heart of Qur'an, the Qalbul Qur'an. And the reason basically is that it has been called as a throbbing heart of Qur'an because it presents the message of the Qur'an in the most forceful manner. And it, it explains and it narrates, the verses explain and narrate the message which is the core, the core message of the of the Quran, that is these three basic articles of faith, and similarly, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told all of us that uh, whoever recites Surah Yasin with the desire to please Allah, then all his previous sins will be forgiven. And it has also been reported by a tradition of Hazrat Muakkil bin Yasar that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. 
ikra'u surah yasin ala mautakum that recite surah yasin all all those people who are struggling between life and death that is in the terminal phases just before life the person who is struggling and in is just close to death and death is just going to be attended to him uh, uh, you need to recite surah yasin on that person so what will be the advantage of reciting surah yasin at this sensitive hour of the life is that we know that the person who is going to pass on in the life here after now after the death the person is going to be is going to pass on to the grave and there they are going to be munkir and nakid the angels of the grave the questioning angels interrogating angels of the grave who are going to ask the three questions who was your lord who did you take as your lord who did you take or who did you believe in as the messenger and prophet of allah and which code of life which religion did you adopt in your life so about allah about prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and about the deen of the person will be the first three inquiries by these angels so what does surah yasin do is because of the three main topics of the surah yasin this is a very effective reminder so it is just it it revises the expected questions just before entering into the life hereafter just before the person passes off into the life hereafter reciting surah yasin is going to help him revise the answers to the first three questions the person is going to come across in the grave it is it is just like similar to a student standing outside the examination hall and uh, revising the questions which have been come which have been suggested that they might uh, they they have been suggested in the guest that they might come in the papers so these three beliefs are needed for the eternal abode faith on allah on prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and hereafter this is these three faiths are like what this is the main currency this is the passport this is the visa which is needed for the passenger on his eternal abode and it is this surah yasin revising refreshing reminding him about all these three things which he needs in his eternal abode so i will be going through the messages of surah yasin with this thing in background and uh, before that i will want to help i would want to narrate a tradition a lengthy narration a traditions by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam as to how and what happens to the person when he dies and what happens in the part of the journey of here after from death to grave so the happenings from death to grave they have been narrated by prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in multiple traditions and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also explained and talked about them in quran as is mentioned in verse number 32 of surah an-nahl that for the for the believers when when the angels they come out they come and they draw out the soul of the believers what do the angels do and how do they relieve how do they behave and what do they say and what is the conversation allah says allazina tatawaffahumul malaikatu tayyibina yaquluna salamun alaykum that this is the time of the departure of the soul of a believer and the angels say to those whom the angels cause to die they say peace be upon you salamun alaykum and as is said in surah ahzab verse 44 that what will they say tahayyatuhum yalqawnahu salamun their their greetings on that day will be peace be upon you and what happens to the soul of a believer when it departs from the body has a barab and azim has reported in musnad ahmad and he reports that we joined the funeral of an ansari 
And when we reached the graveyard, the grave was half dug. And Prophet ﷺ also arrived and he sat down. And we sat down around him silently. And Prophet ﷺ was holding a stick in his hand and he began, he began um, uh, engraving the earth with it. And he suddenly, he raised his head and he said twice or thrice, O oh people, seek shelter from the torments of grave. And then he started narrating the events which would happen between the death and between buried in the grave. And these were the events he narrated for a believer, for a pious person, what happens. He said that when a believer leaves this world for hereafter, angels with shining faces, angels with beautiful shining faces like sunlight, wearing beautiful, clean shining silken clothes and robes who bring with them silken shroud with a scent from the paradise. They come and they sit at a very far distance. And then the angel of death, Hazrat Israel, comes and sits at the head end of the believer and says, O holy soul, leave the body and set out to the forgiveness and happiness of Allah. So the soul leaves the body as softly as water flows out of a water bag. In another tradition, Prophet ﷺ gave the example as softly, as conveniently and easily as the scent, as the scent comes out of a bottle of perfume. And the angel of death catches the soul with its hand just for a moment. And then the other angels wrap it up in the sheet which was brought from the silken sheet laden with all the scents and perfumes of the paradise. They wrap it up and they, they make it fragrant with the sense of paradise. And so the soul, it gives out the smell of the best musk which was found on the surface of the earth. And then the angels, they carry the soul to the sky, to the heavens. And on their way, whenever the favorite angels, they meet them, they ask, whose holy soul is this? And they answer that this is such and such, daughter and son of such and such. And we learn here, these are not the words of the not, not the words of Prophet Sallallahu like I feel I can relate, imagine, we can all imagine that the angels will be introducing the believer, that this is a believer. He used to offer time five times a salah, five times a day. He used to he used to offer the salah, or he used to be the person who used to offer the congregational salah, and he used to be the person who used to offer charity in the path of Allah. And he was, he was good mannered he was the person who was modest she was the person who used to who used to observe purda and wail in her life she was the modest muslim woman so introducing the angels with all the righteous and pious deeds they will take her to the heavens and then prophet Salaam said he and she was known in the world as such as such as the best name and they carried the soul to the sky to the heavens and they will request the door of the heaven to be opened and the door will be opened and the angels of the first sky will escort the soul to the next sky and this process will continue till it reaches the seventh heaven and there by the order of Allah Almighty it will be announced that register the name of my slave in Ilijin an office in Jannah an office in Jannah Will the soul of this believer rest in peace? So this is how the soul of a believer will depart. What we learn from the teachings of Prophet Sallallahu And then <clears throat> when it will be the death, the time of death of a non-believer, of a disbeliever, what will happen? As Allah tells us, as Allah tells us in Surah Anfal, verse number 50, وَلَوْ تَرَى إِذَا يَتَوَفَّى الَّذِينَ قَفَرُوا الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَضْرِبُونَ وَجُوهَهُمْ وَأَدْبَارَهُمْ وَذُوقُوا عَذَابُ الْحَرِيقِ If only you could see the angels receiving all those who were the disbelievers, hitting them on their faces and striking them on their backs and saying, taste the punishment of burning. And similarly in Surah Muhammad verse number 27, and how will, how will it be with them when the angels gather around them, smitting their faces and their backs? 
And in Surah Al-Anam, verse number 94, Allah says, so this is how they will be they will be they will be struck by the angels and they will be like they will be humiliated and the details we learn again from a similar tradition but Prophet Sallallahu kept on narrating. First, he explained how a believer would depart and how honored and respected he will be in this, in this world, in the heavens, and then respectable in Iliyin, an office of Jannah. But what will happen to the disbelievers? Prophet Sallallahu said that when a non-believer is about to leave the worlds and set out to the hereafter, Black-faced angels come to him or her and they carry a shroud of a slack cloth which is filthy and it is stinking and smelly. And they do what? They sit at a far distance from the person. And then Hazrat Israel, the angel of death, sits at the head end and says, O oh, wicked soul, leave the body and set out to the anger and the wrath of your Allah. The soul retreats in the body and sticks and holds tight to the body and the angel does not let it remain. The angel does not let it remain and draws it out as an iron bar is dragged out of wet cotton cloth. And then the other angels, they take it from the hand of Hazrat Israel and they wrap it in this filthy, smelling, stinking sackcloth and they and the soul gives out the most offensive smell, gives out the most ex offensive smell of the worst carcass on the face of the earth. And from every place where the soul would pass on, the angels keep on asking, whose soul is this? Whose soul is this? And they introduce that it is the soul of such and such. And they keep on giving them bad names, according to bad names, according to the bad deeds and the sinful acts. That this is the person who used to, who who was immoral. This is the soul of a liar, of the person who did not, who failed to offer salah. This was the person who used to indulge in polytheism. So it will be introduced, and then Prophet Sallallahu said it will be carried to the to the heavens, and there. They are the doors of heaven, they will not open. And here Prophet Sallallahu recited the verse from Surah Araf, verse number 19. Those who deny our revelations and scan them, for them the gates of heaven will not be opened, nor will they enter the gardens until the camel will go through the need eye of a needle. And then Prophet Sallallahu said that it will be announced that enter the name in Sijin. And the doors of heaven will not be opened and the soul will be thrown and will be imprisoned in Sujin. And what is Sujin? It is, it is a prison deep down in the lowest part of the earth. And then Prophet Wasallam recited the verse, the person who ascribed partners with Allah, it is as if he had fallen from the sky and the birds had snatched him or the winds had blown him to a far off place. So this is what will happen with the soul and what will happen before the person is buried. Hazrat Abu Sayyid Qudri who reports in Bukhari, the Prophet said that when the funeral is ready and the people carry it on their shoulders, the pious man and the woman, the soul of the pious man and the woman will say, carry me hurriedly to my destination, that is to my grave. Because obviously, this, this soul has really, has received all forms of respect and honor as if, as if a red carpet treatment and a protocol. And the soul of the sinful will say what? Ah, woe unto, unto me. Where are you carrying me to? For God's sakes, don't deposit me to the destination. And Prophet Sallallahu said, the voice of the dead body, the voice of the soul 
will be heard and is heard by all the creatures except the human beings and the jinn. And he said that if, if you could hear it, you would fall unconscious. And this is exactly what Prophet Salawalism said, that if, if I had not feared that the people would stop burying their, their relatives in the graves, I would have requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make them hear all what I have heard and what they have not heard. That is, the, all the voices, the hearing, the crying and the yelling of the people of the graves because of the torments of the graves and the yelling of the, and the crying out of the souls before their burial also. Allahumma aini ala ghamarat al maut wa sakarat al maut. Allahumma anis wahshati qabri. Allahumma anis wahshati hashri. Allahumma anis wahshati qabri. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yaseen. Wal Quran al-Hakim. إِنَّكَلَ مِنَ الْمُرْسَلِينَ عَلَى صُرَاطٍ مُسْتَقِيمٍ تَنْزِيلَ الْعَزِيزِ الرَّحِيمِ لِتُنْزِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أُنْزِرَ أَبَاؤُهُمْ فَهُمْ غَافِلُونَ يَا سِينْ By the wise Quran, indeed you are from among the messengers on a straight path, and this is a revelation of the exalted in might and merciful. Why has this been revealed? That you may warn a people whose forefathers were not warned, so that they are unaware. So the opening six verses immediately are reminding the answers to the opening questions of the grave. The first three questions, the person in his journey of hereafter is going to come through is belief on Allah, belief in the prophethood of Prophet وسلم, and hereafter. So this is the importance of reciting Surah Yasin where Prophet وسلم, has instructed all of us. Verse number seven, already the word has come into effect upon most of them, so they do not believe. So in this Verse number seven, despite effective, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, despite explaining how efficient and how effective sources of guidance for the success of hereafter have been provided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but despite that, majority of the people refuse. And in the next verses, Allah will explain the cause of refusal of the people is, is what Allah explains. Allah says, indeed, we have put shackles on their necks and they are to their chins. So they are with their heads kept aloft. So what are these shackles on their, neck, uh, on their necks is their desires, the worldly desires and the lust of this world, which makes a person a slave of his desires. And this leads to what? This leads to disobedience and this leads to, uh, this leads to a disbelief also. Verse number nine. <coughs> Allah says, and we have put before them barriers and behind them barriers and cover them so they do not see. So in this verse number eight and verse number nine, Allah has explained what the actual causes of disbelief and disobedience are. Explaining in verse number eight, the shekels of the, uh, uh, the shekels on the neck are what they are. They are the love of the world and they are the worldly desires. And in this verse number nine, the barriers in front, they mean what? They mean the stubbornness and the obstinacy, the obstinacy which the person knowingly sticks onto. And the barrier at the back is signifying what? The egoistic behavior of the person making obedience a matter or an issue or a problem of ego. And then the, the barrier co being covered from the top means what? This is arrogance. This is arrogance and pride, which becomes what? It becomes a main deterrent for belief and obedience. 
And it is all the same for them. Whether you warn them or you do not warn them, they will not believe. So what we learn from the verse 7, 8 and 9 is, which Allah is um, summing up here is, that all these factors, all these factors of uh, being uh, having the love of the world, of the worldly riches, the worldly desires, of being stubborn, of being obstinate, or of being uh, egoistic, or of being arrogant. These are all the factors which lead to disbelief and disobedience. These factors acting on the person makes him a selfish, uh, makes him a highly selfish, self-centered, egoistic soul. He is, he is, it looks as if he's encapsulated in his own self. Such a person becomes to all that around him oblivious and he prefers disobedience to obedience and disbelief to faith and belief. You can only warn one who follows the message and fears the most merciful unseen. So give him good tidings of forgiveness and noble reward. Indeed, it is we who bring the dead to life and record what they have put forth and what they have left behind and all the things we have enumerated in a clear register. This verse, we really, really, really deeply need to comprehend, understand and to remember to give us the fear of hereafter. The verse explains that the life in this world, this life in this world, all those who had disbelieved and they were lost only in this life. Now, after death, they will be raised for their eternal abode. As Allah says, Inna nahnu naktubu maqaddamu wa atharahum kulla shayin ahswaynahu fi imam mubin. They will be raised for their eternal abode. And what will happen therein will be, they will be raised for their accountability therein. And their record will be maintained. Ahswainahu will be maintained statistically. Ahswainahu means that all the records of the bondsmen, they will be maintained statistically and they will be recorded and they will be safe. The statistically data will have what? Allah says, Naktubu makaddamu. Allah says that everything will be written down. Everything, all the statistical records and de of their deeds and of their activities, it will be all written down, jotted down. By whom? We know, by the Karam and Katabin, the recording angels. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has meticulously instructed them how to record the deeds. They have been instructed. They have been instructed as we learn from the traditions that Allah has told them that when my bondsman makes intentions or decides to do a good deed, then record one good deed for the person. And then Allah has told them that when the bondsman, after making intention or having, in, having or planning to do a good deed, actually does the good deed, and goes ahead and does the righteous deed, then to bless him with a minimum of 10 rewards. That is what Allah has mentioned, Ashra Antaliha, and that is what was promised to Prophet Sallallahu on the night of Miraj. And then Allah has told all, uh, has instructed the Karam and Katabin that when the people, they make intention of committing a sin, uh, committing a sin, then nothing should be recorded and nothing should be put down. Subhanallah, how forgiving is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then they have been ordered that if the person actually commits the sin after the intention, then what? Not 10, just one sin should be put in, put in, in the record. And that also we learn from certain traditions. And that also should be recorded like something after six hours. So in case if the person repents and seeks forgiveness, nothing has to be deleted in the say. And the slate of the person and the record of the person stays clear from the record of sin. So recorded are all the deeds. And statistically recorded, everything is written down and put down and jotted down. And then what? All the, all the things and all the imprints 
our Pharaoh, all the prints are also being recorded. All the imprints are, number one, all the impressions the person used to have on his subordinates or his children, on his companions or his attendants. We all have impressions and influences on all those around us, whether good or whether bad, whether evil, sinful, disobedient of transgression, then the person will be what? Will be a continuous source of punishment. And if we have been a precedence, a source of inspiring our followers, our successors, our children for, for a good deed, for a pious deed, for offering salah, for being hospitable, then all these impressions which we have casted and we have we have made on our on all our successors, these will also be recorded. And then the physical impressions, not just the psychological impressions, not just the psychological and the social and the moral impressions and the imprints will be recorded, but the actual physical impressions and imprints will be recorded just like our footprints. The marks, the marks of our feet when we walk on the ground. They can be easily detected even by the investigational, investigational agencies of today. And if we gather the people of Mecca, they reached all the way up the cave of Sor following the footsteps. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be statistically, by the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the footprints of the bondsmen are also being recorded. Where? They will be recorded for the person who had danced in a gathering, who had danced in a gathering, who had walked with intention of committing murder or indulging in any form of adultery, all these footsteps will be recorded. Similarly would be recorded the steps of a person walking to the mosque or walking to the house of parents or walking to attend a sick Muslim brother because we know that for the reward of each footstep, they have to be rewarded 10 good deeds and 10 sins have to be have to be atoned so footsteps will be recorded similarly the fingerprints the fingerprints of all the bondsmen will be recorded and they are being recorded and we know we know very well that it is even possible for all of us murderers their footprints their fingerprints on on the on the gun or on the pistol they are they are detected and we find out who the murderer was we are doing that. Human beings are doing that with the scientific technology of today. So all the fingerprints are being recorded. The fingerprints of a person who had, who had held on to a goblet to drink wine or of a person who had, who had held or gripped a pen to sign a deal for interest or riba or the fingerprints of all those who had who had beaten or who had slapped an orphan are the fingerprints of all those who had held the Quran or the fingerprints of a person, of a lady who was, who was holding the steering wheel, the fingerprints on the steering wheel while she was driving to attend a Quran class. And then by our presence, the images, the visual images which are casted on the environments, they are also being recorded. We, we humans, with our scientific technology of today, we can record, we can record images and pictures and make videos with our cameras, with our digital mobiles. Allah's cameras, they will record. They will record the presence of all those in a musical concert. They will record the presence of all those in a hadith class. They will record the they will record the videos of all those helping and serving others, looking after their parents, sick old parents. And then the sounds, we can record the sounds. We can record the sounds so easily today in our mobiles, in our sound recording devices whatsoever. The audio is being recorded. Audios are being recorded by the audio devices of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's been recorded when somebody recites the Quran, when somebody teaches the Quran. And the audios will be recorded for all the people when they were busy in a they were busy in a meeting, in a get-together, mocking people, taunting, taunting people, hurting people, 
dishonoring people, backbiting, slander. This was all being recorded. This is all being recorded, all the conversations. And then on the day of judgment, it will be asked, did you, did you backbite? Did you tell a lie? Did you slander? And the person might just refuse on the day of judgment, standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tell a lie and try to escape. And then it will be ordered. Play the audio. And this will be a witness. This will be a proof. This is nahnu naqtubu. Ma qaddamu wa atharahum kulla shayin akhswaynahu fi imam mubin. And the records of Allah, the statistical records of Allah, today we human beings, we've invented, we have invented the brain scans, the CT scans, the EEG, the ECGs, recording the conditions of the heart, the recording the conditions and the vibrations of the brain, the body inside out, the scanners of the Allah. Scanners of Allah are how powerful they will, they will record, they will sense, detect the intentions of the heart, the desires in the soul, and the feelings of the mind itself. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Allahumma hasibna hisab in yasira. Wa bighfir warham wa anta khayru rahimeen. And present to them an example, the people of the city, when messengers came to it. So from here onwards, a uh, few, the whole stanza, so from starting from verse number 13, is a full stanza in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala narrates the event of a community who was sent with two or even more uh, messengers and prophets, and they would not believe, and they failed to believe, and they did not uh, obey also, and uh, how they were punished and how they were penalized by the torments of Allah. This is the purpose of the whole narration of the stanza would be to highlight the importance of belief on prophethood and the result of disbelieving the prophets and disobeying the prophets. When we sent to them two, but they denied them. And so we strengthened them with a third. What was this? A prophet. Who was this? A prophet. And they said, indeed, we are messengers to you. They said, you are not but human beings like us. And the most merciful has not revealed a thing. You are only telling lies. They said, our Lord knows that we are messengers to you. And we are not responsible except for clear notification. They said, indeed, we consider you a bad omen. If you do not desist, we will surely stone you and they will surely touch you from us a painful punishment. They said, your omen is with you yourselves. Is it, uh, is it because you were reminded? Rather, rather, you are transgressing people. And there came from the farthest end of a city, a man running. He said, oh, my people, follow the messengers. This is what we need to do. Follow those who do not ask you of any payment and they are rightly guided. And why should I not worship he who created me and to whom you will be returned? Should I take other than him false deities? While if the most merciful intends for me some adversity, their intercession will not avail me at all, nor can they save me. Indeed, I would be then in manifest error. Indeed, I have believed in your Lord. So, so this was what? This was the person who was inviting them. This was another person in the same city where all the people were disbelieving and disobeying. But there was one person who was inviting them towards faith in Allah, in the oneness of Allah, staying all forms of polytheism, introducing to the attributes of Allah, inviting them to the faith in the prophethood of the prophethoods uh, of the three prophets and also in belief in hereafter. And he said, indeed, I have believed in your Lord. So listen to me. It was said, enter paradise. He said, I wish my people could know of how my Lord has forgiven me and placed me among the honored. And we did not send down upon these people who, who neither believed in Allah nor in the prophet and nor in hereafter. We did not send upon his people after him any soldiers from the heaven, nor would we have done so. It was not but one shout and immediately they were extinguished. How regretful for the servants there did not come to them any messenger except that they used to ridicule him. 
<coughs> have you not considered how many generations we have destroyed before them, but uh, that they to them will not return, and indeed all of them will yet be brought present before us. Verse 33, and a sign for them is the dead earth. We have brought it to life and brought forth from it grain and from it they eat so just as allah orders of um, allah is explaining in this verse that just as by the order of allah after rain <coughs> by the order of allah after rain signs of life they emerge from a barren dead piece of land so similarly all those who are dead and they are buried will be raised to life from their graves so what is the verse introducing that after this death they will all be raised for their eternal abode and we place therein gardens of palm trees and grapevines and cause to burst forth their form some springs that they might eat of his fruit and their hands not produced it. So they will they not be grateful? Exalted is he who created all pairs from what each from birth from what earth grows and from themselves and from that which they do not know and a sign for them is the night we remove from it the light of the day so they are left in darkness and the sun runs one course towards its stopping point then that is the determination of the exalted in might and knowing so now like in these verses verses number 38 to 40 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be explaining that like the heavenly bodies the sun the moon the heavenly bodies they pass from one stage to the other so similarly all the human beings will slowly drift from one stage to the other and we do actually in our lives also we see this transit from birth infancy to childhood to youth to old age and death and that is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining allah has created pairs this life there is hereafter with life there is death after after death like conditions they have been passing on from one stage to other in this worldly life the conditions will go on passing go on passing from one stage to other in the eternal life also but what we remember to need to remember is that after shifting from one to the another each each stage which is going to come later is going to be more difficult than the stage previous to it in the eternal life in the life hereafter in the person who who starts his journey on the eternal board remember we all remember need to remember and fear for the fear of life hereafter that each later stage is going to be definitely much much more difficult and tormenting than the previous stage death is more difficult than old age grave more difficult than death day of judgment even more difficult than the grave people will be calling out haza yawmun usr prophets will be crying out nafsi nafsi so day of judgment more difficult and of full of more hardships in the grave and accountability of the most difficult difficult conditions on the day of judgment and then after after accountability that bridge of sarat that bridge of sarat and finally the hell fire or the bounties of jannah allahumma ajirna min an-nar rabbibni li 'indaka baitan fil jannah and the moon we have determined for it its phases until it returns appearing like the old date stock it is not allowable for the sun to reach the moon nor does the night take overtake the day but each in a orbit but each in an orbit is swimming 
And a sign for them is that we carried their forefathers in a laden ship and we created for them the likes of it that which they ride. And if we should will, we could drown them. Then no one responding to a cry would there be for them, nor would they be saved except as a mercy from us and provision for a time. So in these verses, number 41 to 44, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining the condition of a person, of a person aboard a ship. The person who is on a ship lands to the shore with the blessing and with the mercy of Allah. So similarly, a person on his eternal abode will sail safe to the land on the soil of Jannah. He will sail safe in his eternal board and will finally land on the soil of Jannah only and only with the mercy and with the blessings of Allah, the Lord of the day of judgment. So actually this verse is suggesting us what? To keep on asking for the mercy and for the blessings of Allah in this condition. And that is exactly the supplication Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has instructed all the people to recite before the soul departs. The, the supplication which has been taught in Quran, warham wa anta khayru rahimin, before the departing soul is asked to recite what? This, so, this verse and this supplication so that is asking for the mercy of Allah without which without which nobody can enter Jannah. But when it is said to them, be aware, be aware of what is before you and what is behind you, perhaps you will receive mercy and no sign comes to them from the signs of their Lord, except they are from it turning away. And when it is said to them, spend from that which Allah has provided for you, those who disbelieve, say to those who believe, should we feed on whom? Should we feed on whom? If Allah had will, he would have fed. You are not but in clear error. So here this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is suggesting to spend before the time of death comes, before the person who is struggling between life and death in the last stages of his life, the verse is suggesting when he has been reciting, when Surah Yasin has been recited to him, the verse is suggesting, the verse is reminding the person to spend charity in the path of Allah, to trade and to barter for the house of Jannah. This is exactly similar to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Baqarah. Allah says, Ya yuallazina amanu, anfiku mimma razaqnaakum, min qabli an ya'tiyakum yawmun la bayyun fihi, wala khullatun, wala shifa'atun, wal kafiruna humu zhalimun. Allah is encouraging to spend all the bounties which he has blessed his bondsmen before the death is attempted. And Allah says that all who refuse to spend on the path of Allah from the bounties blessed, they are what? They are the wrong tours. They are the wrongdoers. And that is exactly what Prophet Sallallahu has taught all of us. He said, spend, spend in the path of Allah before death is attended. And then you start saying, give this to such and such, O son of Adam. The wealth at that time is not yours. It is your heirs. And they say, when is this promise? If you should be truthful, they do not evade except one blast which will seize them and they will, uh, they, which will seize them while they are disputing. And they will not be able to give any instructions, nor to their people can they return. So this verse now reminds, reminds the person to make any form of will if desired because Allah is saying here that the time is soon going to come that you will not be able to tausiyatan there will be no wasiya there will be no will soon you will not be able to make any advice or any will and that is exactly what Prophet has his advice also he said that if someone if someone intends to make a will if someone intends to make a will or desires to make a will 
regarding his inheritance, then three days and three nights should not pass so that it should be as a written form with him. Verse number 51, and the horn will be blown and at once from the graves to their lords will they hasten. So the verse to the person struggling between life and death is doing what? Is introducing him to the to the stages of life hereafter. And they will say, oh, woe to us who has raised us up from our sleeping places. These will be what? These will be the believers who will be asked to sleep and to relax and retire in their graves. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. The reply will be, this is what the most merciful had promised and the messengers hold the truth. It will not be but one blast and at once they all will be brought and presented before us. So today no soul will be wronged at all and you will not be recompensed except for what you used to do. So continuously, all these verses are giving a reconfirmation of the life hereafter and about the day of resurrection. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is continuously explaining that what will happen after they are all resurrected, that there will be accountability, there will be interrogation, and there will be decision. And the decision will be with total justice. And after decision, where will they go? They and their spouses in shade, reclining on adorned couches and from there in fruit and for them is whatever they request or wish and what will be called aloud and peace, peace, a word from the merciful Lord. And then he will say, but stand apart today, you criminals. So from here we see that once this decision, the just decisions of the day of judgment after accountability and interrogations will be made by weighing on the just scales of the, of the day of judgment, they will go, the people who will be righteous, for them the scenes of Jannah, their residence for the right, righteous in the path and the pious have been shown. And then in the verse number 59, Allah says that there will be announcement, that there will be announcement of the day of resurrection, that in this world, we know that all the people are like jumbled, the believers, the non-believers, those offering salah and those not offering salah, the disobedience and the obedience. But on the day of judgment, the righteous and obedient, they will be separated from the transgressors and the disobedient. All of them will be separated out. They will be sorted out. So the result they will be given the punishment they have to be given or the reward they have to be given is also separate. Did I not, did I not enjoin upon you, O children of Adam, salam, that do not worship shaitan, for indeed he is to you a clear enemy, and that you worship only me, this is the straight path, and he had already led astray from among you much of the creation, so did you not use reason? This is the hellfire which you were promised, enter to burn their end today for what you used to deny. That day we will seal over your mouths and where your hands will speak to us and their feet will testify about you. They used to earn. And if we willed, we could have obliterated their eyes and they would raise to find the path. How could they see? And if we willed, we could have deformed them, paralyzing them in their places so they would not be able to proceed, nor could they return. And he to whom we grant long life, we reverse in creation. So will they not understand? So here in this verse, for uh, there is like a direct reality check. There is a reality check for all those who are grieved at the separation of their near dear departed one. A truth of life is being explained to console them to all, all those people who are sad at the loss of their near dear departed one that had he lived had he lived longer to a greater older age he might have reverted to the arzalil umar and we did not give prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the knowledge of poetry nor is it befitting for him it is not but the message and a clear quran to warn whoever is alive and to justify the word against the believers do 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 they not see that we have created for them what our hands have made grazing livestock and then they are their owners 
So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding, is reminding the departing soul how Allah had blessed him in this world and what blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he kept on availing and he will be accountable in hereafter. And we have tamed for them uh, we have tamed them for them. So some of them they ride and some of them they eat. And for them they are in our other benefits and drinks. So will they not be grateful? But they have taken besides Allah false deities that perhaps they would be helped. They are not able to help them. And they themselves are for them soldiers in attendance. So let not their speech grieve you. Indeed, we know that they conceal and what they declare. Does man not consider that we created him from a mere sperm drop? Then at once he is clear adversary and he presents for us examples and forgets his own creation. He says, who will give, li who will give, li uh, give life to bones while they are disintegrated? Say, he will give life who produced them for the first time and he is of all creations knowing. It is he who made for you from the green tree fire and then from it you ignite. So in this verse also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is explaining, is explaining a scientific, a scientific uh, point we need to realize. And we realize in this would realize how scientific the verses of Quran is. Allah is saying here that it is Allah who made you for you the green tree fire. Firstly, this, uh, this verse, it refers to the true trees, the trees of Marh and Afah, as they were called. And uh, we know that when the branches of the two trees, they were rubbed with each other, they created fire. And these were used for people of the previous ages when there were no matches and there was no method to strike and light the fire, similar to the flint stones as they were used to light fire. And moreover, this verse also explains a very scientific information. And Allah says that all these green plants and all these green trees which have chlorophyll, that green substance in the, in the leaves, is the green substance which traps the energy of sunlight and then it changes into plant food and this plant food is basically the source of energy of all the earth <coughs> the plants they are eaten they are consumed by the animals and then this plant energy is changed into animal energy and other animals consume animals and they acquire their bodily energies of heat and temperature and of activities from this plant energies indirectly. And similarly, we burn the trees. The wood of the trees is burned to give fire and fuel for all forms of energy requiring procedures and thermal requiring procedures. And similarly, the trees, all the trees on the earth, millions of years when the trees they died they were buried and they stayed buried under the pressure they changed into coal and they changed into gas and oil and mineral resources and all these are what these are the sources of energy all the energy on the earth allah almighty is the best sustainer he is no doubt the best planner he is the best botanist he is the best biologist he is the best mineralogist and allah is al alim is it not he who created the heaven and the earth able to create the likes of them yes it is so and he is the knowing creator he commands his command is only when he intends a thing is what he says to it be and it is verse 83 so exalted is he in whose hands is the realm of all the things and to him you will be returned subhanallah wa bihamdihi subhanallah al azim so when we have to return to him we need to exalt him we need to praise him we need to remember him and we need to glorify him subhanallah walhamdulillah wala ilaha illallah wallahu akbar
سبحان اللہ و بحمد ہی ادد خلق ہی و رضا نفس ہی و زینت عرش ہی و مداد قلمات ہی لا الہ الا اللہ وقته لا شریک له له الملک و له الحمد یحیی و یمیت اللہم عینی علا غمرات الموت و سکرات الموت اللہم آنس وحشت قبری اللہم آنس وحشت حشری اللہم آنس وحشت حشری ربنا آتنا فی الدنیا حسنتا و فی الاخرت حسنا وکن عذاب النار اللہم حاسبنا حساب یسیرا اللہم حاسبنا حساب یسیرا اللہم حاسبنا حساب یسیرا اللہم اجیرنا من النار رب ابن لی عندک بیتا فی الجنہ ربنا لا تزع قلوبنا بعد اس خدیتنا و حبلنا من لدنك الرحمة انك انت الوحاب سبحانك اللہم و بحمدك نشهد ان لا الہ الا انت نستغفرك و نتوب علیك سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يسفون و سلام على المرسلين و الحمد لله رب العالمين آمین سم آمین